medicine in America. My name is Joel Penner. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, a California state licensed acupuncturist and herbalist, and a professor of oriental medicine. I'm also co-author of the textbook Song Fu Syndrome's Differential Diagnosis and Treatment. In this episode, I will be talking about the spleen, also known as the spleen pancreas. The organ known as the spleen in Chinese medicine includes the functions of both the spleen and the pancreas in Western medicine. It's very important for me to remind you that even though they share the same names, the Chinese organs are vastly different from the Western organs. If you try to impose your Western understanding on the Chinese organs, you will get completely confused. The Zong Fu are energy or qi transformers in a complex bioenergetic system and their functions relate to their qi transformation processes. The spleen is the third member of the group of organs called the qi axis. The other organs are the kidneys and the lungs. While the kidneys hold and transform jing or genetic qi and the lungs receive and transform clean air qi, the spleen transforms and transports qi extracted from food and drink, which is called gu qi. Digestion is then its most important function. The spleen has six important functions, which I will describe in this episode. First, the spleen governs transformation and transportation. The spleen transforms food and drink and transports it to other parts of the body and is crucial to the process of digestion and the production of qi and blood. If this process is impaired, people may have a poor appetite, indigestion, abdominal distension, and loose stools. The spleen also controls the transformation, separation, and transportation of fluids. It separates the clear fluids, which are usable by the body, from the dirty fluids, which are unusable. The clear fluids are transported upward to the lungs to be distributed under the skin. This process was described in the previous episode. The dirty fluids are transported downward to the intestines where they are further separated with the reusable clear fluids being transported upward via the Ming Mun and the dirty fluids being excreted by the bladder. If this function is impaired, we can see dampness or phlegm accumulation with edema, weight gain, and or the excretion of mucus. The function of the spleen is enhanced by dryness and impaired by dampness. Again, a deficient spleen does not transport fluids properly and leads to dampness accumulation. This is a vicious circle in which an impaired spleen creates dampness and that dampness further impairs the spleen's function. This is why weight gain can occur quickly and is so difficult to eliminate. A damp spleen can also cause abdominal distension, urinary problems, and vaginal discharge. Second, the spleen controls the blood. It is said to be the source of qi and blood. The spleen is critical to the process of manufacturing blood. Gu qi, or fu qi, is first transported upward to the lungs, where it mixes with lung qi and is catalyzed by original qi, or yuan qi, from the kidneys. It is then sent into the heart, where it is transformed into blood. Spleen qi keeps the blood in its vessels. If the spleen is deficient, the vessels are not strong enough to hold the blood. Just the slightest trauma can cause the vessels to break and cause bruising. The typical person whose spleen is not governing the blood properly bruises easily. He or she wakes up in the morning and sees new, unexplained bruises. The spleen is said to be the root of postnatal qi. This means that the spleen, or digestion, is a main provider of qi during our lifetimes. Third, the spleen controls the muscles and the four limbs. Gu qi nourishes all of the tissues in the body. If spleen qi is weak, it can't transport qi to the muscles and the person will feel fatigued. The muscles will become weak and in severe cases, the muscles will atrophy. The amount of physical energy a person has is directly related to the state of the spleen. Fourth, the spleen opens into the mouth and manifests in the lips. 
The first stage of the digestive process is chewing food and mixing it with saliva in the mouth. If spleen chi is impaired, there may be a loss of the sensation of taste or the presence of an abnormal taste which is often described as sticky sweet. Either of these can cause us to quickly chew and swallow our food rather than take the time to let it mix with the digestive fluids in the mouth which have been provided by the spleen. Since the spleen manifests in the lips, if the spleen has excess heat, the lips may be dry. If the spleen chi is deficient, the lips may be pale. The fifth important function of the spleen is that it controls the raising of chi. The spleen produces a lifting effect along the midline of the body. It is this force that holds the organs in place. If spleen chi is deficient, and its raising function is weak, there may be prolapse of one or more of the organs. This most commonly affects the stomach, kidneys, uterus, and bladder. As I mentioned earlier, the spleen raises the refined chi extracted from food to the lungs and the heart. The upward movement of the spleen is coordinated with the downward movement of the stomach, so that the clean chi goes upward and the dirty chi descends. If dampness obstructs the spleen, the clear yang chi cannot rise to the head and the patient will feel a heaviness and fogginess in the head. The spleen houses thought. This is its final function. It influences our capacity for thinking, studying, concentrating, focusing, and memorizing. If spleen chi is weak, Thinking will be dull, concentration will be difficult, and memory will be poor. Conversely, studying, mental work, and concentration for extended periods of time, or pathological thinking such as worrying or obsessing, can injure the spleen. I hope you now understand why the spleen's functions are so important. We tend to eat too much food in our society, which overtaxes the spleen's ability to transform and transport. I believe that this is one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, our health has been so compromised. And that's going to do it for this episode. If you have questions, please contact me at joel at americandragon.com. In our next episode, we will address the functions of the heart. See you then.